This is Andrew Michael. I'd like to talk to you today about the Red Hard Integrated Current Limiter and Space Applications Portfolio. For those of you who are unfamiliar with ST, we are one of the world's largest semiconductor companies with a broad range of differentiated semiconductor technologies and addressing markets that include automotive, industrial, personal electronics, communications equipment, computers, and peripherals. And of course, space is the subject of today's webinar. Our 2019 revenues were close to $10 billion with about 46,000 employees, about 8,000 in R&D, and over 80 sales and marketing offices in 36 countries around the world. Servicing more than 100,000 customers worldwide, our technology is found almost everywhere you find microelectronics. We are a global company with a strong presence of around 750 people in the U.S. Our 11 manufacturing sites worldwide master all aspects of the semiconductor supply chain from front end to back end. When it comes to space, our back end manufacturing and testing space qualified plant is based in Rennes, France, and is qualified by both the DLA and the ESA. The first space qualification in REN happened back in 1977 with ESA more than 40 years ago. The key activities are QMLV, ESCC, and JNS qualification assembly and screening of space parts and hermetically sealed packages and die. This is the overview of our space offering. Our space grade parts are built using digital power and mixed technologies and include analog, logic, power transistors, rectifiers, interfaces, and power management devices. Next, I would like to talk about the new integrated current limiter. We showed a demonstration of this part at the NASREC show last August. Our background for development of this part is that current limiter devices are typically used for bus protection purposes in power distribution control units. The discrete version has historically been used, but has a relevant impact on PCB area. The ICL is an alternative to fuse approach in the commercial telecommunications satellites. Our goals, develop an ICL that embeds most of the components to avoid recurrent redesign by using discrete components, to be able to cover all basic design needs, and implement additional requirements by making this ICL an attractive standard product. Now let's look at the main features of the ICL. It supports a wide supply range of 8.5 to 52 volts, which is ideal for a 28 volt bus has a very low supply current of 1.5 milliamps. has three operational modes, latched and latch mode. When an overcurrent event is detected, the device supplies the load with a limited current for a configurable time interval called T on. Afterwards, the device switches off the P-channel FET and external reset is needed to restore normal operation. Retriggable. In retrievable mode is the same as latch with the T on period, and afterwards the device switches off the P channel FET, but this time for recovering time called T off. When this time is elapsed, the device restarts. This is useful for temporary faults to try to restart the system. Foldback. Foldback mode limits the current as soon as the over voltage current event is detected. The FETs never turned off completely. But if the output voltage decreases during the event, the current limit value is decreased accordingly to ensure the current remains at a safe value even in short circuit conditions. It's highly configurable. External current limitation setting. There's a configurable trip off and recovery times. And there's an under voltage protection threshold, both on and hysteresis. Floating ground functionality. And there's a smart current limitation for repetitive overload. 
is also digital and analog telemetries. As far as radiation characteristics go, TID is 100K rad, SEL and SU EU free up to 75 MeVs, and his set has been characterized. Let's look at the advantages versus a discrete solution. This is a turnkey solution ready to use with new features. Got significant reduction of solution size on PCB compared to a discrete solution thanks to the higher level of integration. It avoids time consuming recurrent redesign of the discretes when you must change the current or other parameters. Got reduction of the de development risk and cost. Got remote control in case of fault. This way the mission can control the device. This function is available on the latch mode. Applications. Main bus protection from excessive current demands in space application. For aerospace science missions, for LEO and GEO missions, for telecom missions with bus up to 52 volts, and extendable into higher voltages, 100 volts or more, by means of the usage of external components. Here's the application circuit diagram. Not all the components are needed, but it depends on the output mode. Let me go around in clockwise order and describe the pins. Let's start at the top with the VCC, your supply pin. Next is a sense resistor. This will set your current limit. And the P-channel FET, which is set for the current desired. Moving down, you have the VD pin to sense the output voltage. TM pin so that for the analog telemetry. STS is a digital telemetry pin. I'll explain those functions later. There's some filtering on the extreme right and a freewheeling diode for inductive loads. Moving to the bottom of the diagram, we have the ground with some resistors to give a floating ground feature. I'll be describing that later. And going to the left, we have all the configuration pins for the T on, T off, and the other options. The under voltage lockout has a simple resistor divider. An IntelliCommand interface has a circuit to adapt the voltages from the command device to the ICL. This device can be configured into four different modes through proper combination hardware configuration pins according to the table below. If you look on the left side, there's different modes, latched on at startup, latched off at startup, pre-triggable or foldback. back. Look across the top, different pins are set foldback pin, it can be either grounded or VCC. Set STS can be tied either to VCC or ground. PC on can be either enabled or disabled. PC off, enabled or disabled. T on, either a capacitor connected to it or ground. And T off can be either a capacitor connected or ground. Also in a fullback mode, you have uh, requires three additional external resistors. This next slide is a very important feature. Our device has a floating ground allows it to work over a wide voltage range, keeping an almost constant VCC to ground voltage. The internal short of VCC to ground is not acceptable. So we have an internal zener diode plus external resistor, our up ground, used for this protection. The zener will clamp the voltage to 14.8 volts typically, and the resistor will limit the current. This allows the device to be inserted into a high voltage power supply unit. Also, adoption of a high voltage technology for the IC is not mandatory. The ICL device internally works with a fixed voltage, whatever VCC value. With this zener, the PSRR, which is power supply reduction ratio, is optimized. The coupling resistor RF ground must be properly sized because it will sustain the voltage stress and not the ICL device. Current limitation value ILM of the system is set easily by changing the value of the external sense resistor, R-Sense. The high voltage op-amp embedded in the current sense loop 
as an internal fixed offset that's not adjustable of 100 millivolts. The voltage drop on external R sense resistor is continuously monitored and paired with the 100 millivolt internal offset. E on the trip off time is easily set by the C on cap and the RI ref resistor. In retrievable mode, you also have the recovery time T off that is 20 times the C off cap value times the RI ref value. When the device is configured in the foldback mode, it never turns off, especially when an overcurrent occurs, otherwise the mission could be compromised. When an overcurrent event is detected, the device provides a current limit whose value goes in tracking with the output voltage, reaching a small and safe value even if a short circuit on a load occurs and remains. In other words, the output current shall be limited with a foldback VI characteristic in order to limit the power dissipation of the external vet. This mode requires three additional resistors. Now let's look at the reaction time. As soon as the current crosses the ILM threshold, it takes some time for the analog loop to start acting. This is a reaction time. Let's look at the pink area. During this interview, the current is out of control and limited only by the total impedance beam downstream the power MOSFET. The rising current stops as soon as the internal current loop starts to react, thus defining the reaction time of the ICL. In the green area, once the output current has reached the peak value, it starts to decrease back to lower values. The shape of the current during this interview is influenced not only by the control circuit of the device, but also by the harness, cables, and filters downstream the ICL device. The target is 3 to 5 microseconds. What happens when you have both voltages higher than 52 volts? Because we use a floating ground with the addition of a few more components, it is able to withstand higher than 90 volts. You can see the zener in green, which is added to clamp the voltage between VCC and VD in case the load is shorted to the bus ground. There's also added MOSFETs to telemetry and status signals in pink since they have direct connections to the bus ground to clamp the voltage. Full support can be supplied for your application if you have to tailor it to a unique situation. Here are the orderable parts and the resources available. We have three different versions in stock now, evaluation model, engineering models, flight models. We have a data sheet online at st.com. We have the SMD. We have the evaluation boards available uh, in stock in three different versions. We have uh, evaluation board manuals online. We have the radiation report. You just request it. Spice models available. Flyers available. We have uh, uh, three different technical papers. Here's the three different evaluation boards available in different, uh, depending on your output mode. Now let's move to overview of the ST Micro's portfolio for spaced applications. Thanks to ST's broad range of products and technologies, we can cover power, analog signal conditioning, and digital interfacing needs, including A to Ds and D to As, for a seamless power and signal condition solution. In this single slide, we show all our space product families, their radiation hardness, their qualification status, whether QMLB or ESCC, and the main characteristics in a simple selection guide. Each device is available in the engineering model version with lower cost and reduced red hard test and guarantee, and flight spec flight model version with SMD assigned by the DLA.
some highlights on our power management in the next few slides. Our L4913 is one of our best-selling LDOs in the space industry. It's been around for almost 20 years with widespread market recognition for match radiation performance and several unsuccessful attempts from our competitors to make a similar device. The L4913A is an adjustable positive voltage regulator able to provide two amps of maximum current in flat 16 package or three amps in SMD package. The input voltage range is three to 12 volts. Typical dropout voltage of 350 millivolts at 400 milliamps. A new generation LDO is the RHF l 6000 a It keeps the best in class 300 K rad radiation performance and improves in several aspects. The key advantage over the L4913 is a strongly enhanced set behavior at 120 MeVs. Got a lower voltage drop, got access to feedback loop for compensation and stability with low ESR caps. It has a smoother dynamic response thanks to the emitter bias current sense on the output stage as shown in the black diagram. And there's a grounded lid on the package. Some of these improvements came at the cost of a small increase in current consumption and shutdown, 35 microamps versus 15 microamps of the 4913. The RH RPM POL01 is a single phase step down monolithic switching regulator with a 0.8 volts high precision internal voltage reference and integrated end channel power MOSFETs for synchronous operation. The device has been developed using ST320 nanometer BCD6 SOI technology that offers excellent performance against SEL effect. The regulator input voltage range is up to 12 volts and the output voltage is adjustable from 0.8 to 85% of the N. The DC output current is tested and guaranteed at 7 amps, even if the regulator is able to output more than 10 amps under proper conditions. The controller is based on peak current mode architecture for superior load transient response and stable switching frequency. The fault management consists of not latched output over voltage protection over current protection and auto recovery thermal protection. Even though the device is tested and guaranteed up to 12 volts at the end, radiation performance is guaranteed up to an input voltage of seven volts. Switching frequency is adjustable from 10, I mean from 100 kilohertz to one megahertz. Our POL has been designed to supply FPGAs, DSPs, MCUs, and ASICs in general for space applications. It's possible to synchronize a switching frequency of two or more of these and to regulate the independent output voltages. By connecting the sync pins of two devices, they'll be synchronized to each other and out of phase by 180 degrees. This reduces the size of the input cap and avoids the beat frequency disturbance. It's also possible to use two or more of these in interleave mode or current sharing configuration as shown on the right side of the slide. In this case, the regulators will supply power into the same voltage rail, increasing the low current capability. This is a typical use case for FPGA core supplies where more than 30 amps might be needed to supply at one volt or less as shown in the next slide. This block diagram shows a typical reference design where a combination of our RH RPM pol ones and our RHF L6000s LDOs are used to supply the voltage rail of FPGA and the DDR3 memory. LDOs are used for the noise sensitive loads or when the output current is low enough to make the power dissipation acceptable. The last products I'd like to highlight for power management are the ST1843 and 1845 PWM controllers. These devices are space grade versions of the industry standard UC3842 controller 
guaranteed at 50 and 100 K RAD respectively. These parts are not QMLV, but the ESCC qualification provides a level of quality and guaranteed radiation hardness over the commercial grade UC3842 that's commonly used in the space market. Among the most successful space product families at ST are logics and interfaces. Our LVDS parts are the best on the market because of a combination of unsurpassed radiation performance through inner KRAD, speed 400 megabits per second, and maximum voltage ratings, five volts. Quad drivers, quad receivers, and dual drivers receivers in one package are very popular. A comparison with the closest identified competitors is shown here. ST's LVDSs come out ahead in radiation performance and higher ion energy and ESD robustness, which is not guaranteed by our competitors. Our devices feature a max supply voltage that's higher than our competitors, an input common load range, tolerant up to five volts as opposed to the three volts of our competitors. We have faster propagation delays, and by far the lowest skews differential in channel to channel and chip to chip. ST's most successful logic family in the US space market is by far the AC ACT family. It's the largest and most complete portfolio of fast CMOS logic functions at 300 k -man. The more mature and long-standing CMOS 4000 and HCACT logics are not QMLV qualified, but nevertheless widely used in the U.S. market. AC and VCX logics come in hermetically sealed packages with the option of a grounded lid internally connected to the ground pin. For low voltage applications requiring higher speed, the AHC logics further raise the bar of performance. Twice as fast and with one third of the propagation delay versus the AC family, the AHC is built on a smaller size technology, still maintaining the same TID RAD hardness at 300 K RAD. Built in the same 130 nanometer technology as the latest generation of AHC logics, this part's a 300K crystal driver and frequency divider all in one package, replacing a discrete solution with logic aids. Engineering models in flat 10 are available and QMLV qualification coming shortly. The device can drive an external crystal from 16 to 120 megahertz and depending on the frequency of the selection pins, it can output a clock at the same frequency, or one half, one quarter, and one eighth of the original frequency. Typical applications are oscillators for PLLs, clock generators for data converters. It's also available in die form for integration in modules and chip on board solutions. Now a few highlights about ST Micro's data converters for space applications. You've probably heard of the random conversion glitch problem documented in the recent guide up alert. ST is not affected by this problem. The RH FAD 128 is a low power multiplex eight channel 12 bit A to D converter for conversions from 50 kilosamples per second to one megasamples per second. The architecture is a successive approximation register. The RH FAD 128 features eight analog inputs, which can be reprogrammed to be either eight single-ended or four differential inputs. The output serial data is straight binary and compatible with SPI. Analog and digital power supplies operate from 2.7 volts to 3.6 volts. This part's pin to pin compatible with the TI ADC128. RHF1201 and 1401 A to D converters are based on a pipeline architecture 
will provide excellent static linearity and optimize the speed power consumption ratio. Specifically designed to optimize power consumption, the 1401 only dissipates 85 milliwatts at 20 mega samples per second, while the 1201 draws just 100 milliwatts at 50 mega samples per second. Typical applications are IF sampling and digital communications, data acquisition and telemetry and space applications, and nuclear high energy physics. Both devices are used in multiple projects by leading U.S. customers. We are also coming out with a new DAC, RHDAC121. It's a 12-bit architecture. It's a SAR type of DAC. It's 10 millivolts offset, rail-to-rail -rail voltage output. This one is a pin compatible with a TI-DAC121. It's a 300K rad part. Samples later this year, flight models uh, next year. All of our space parts have two different versions, either engineering models or flight models. The EMs have the same die but without all the testing, so you can save money when you're building prototypes with our EM models. SD has been designing and manufacturing op amps for the consumer, industrial, automotive, and space markets for over 40 years. From industry standard to the latest high precision zero drip amplifiers for analog sensor applications. Powering slides are a quick overview of the space portfolio for amplifiers. The product portfolio is mapped here showing gain bandwidth product from 1 MHz to 1 GHz and maximum supply voltage. The RHF484 and RHF43 among the most popular precision amplifiers used for general purpose signal conditioning at 8 MHz bandwidth and 16 volts maximum supply voltage. They're both rail-to-rail, -rail, precision, bipolar op amps with 60 microvolt and 100 microvolts input offset voltage. The RHF3 series at 5 volts are high-speed current feedback amplifiers. The RHF350A is a current feedback single op amp with 550 megahertz bandwidth and a slew rate of 940 volts per microsecond. The RHF330 achieves a large bandwidth of 1 gigahertz and gain of 2 by drawing only 16 milliamps of supply current with a slew rate of 1800 volts per microsecond and an output stage optimized for standard 100 ohm loads this device is suitable for applications where speed and low distortion are the main requirements. The RHR61 and RHR64 devices are pure CMOS single and quad op amps respectively at 100 KRAD. One picoamp low input bias current and 60 microamp current consumption per operator. The RHF200 is a very high speed, 420 megahertz, pure differential amplifier that can operate with a 5 volt power supply. Four gains can be set by two digital inputs. It can be used as a differential to differential or single ended to differential amplifier and it's able to drive an ADC input or a 100 ohm differential line. With this non inverting architecture, the RHF200 features a high input impedance that's particularly intended to drive video signals from CCC sensors to an ADC line. Heading toward the conclusion of the presentation, a brief mention about our roadmap for low Earth orbit applications. Between the two opposite polarities, the new space is a domain of good enough for the target environment. Something in between COTS, commercial off-the-shelf electronics, and red hard, driven mainly by cost considerations. And swap, size, weight, and power to swap C, size, weight, and power, and cost. The long life expectancy in space and mission critical systems will still demand a guaranteed high reliability and high radiation hardness not achievable with automotive grade commercial available parts. Hence the need for a new series of space products for LEO.
ST's approach to LEO requirements is summarized in this chart. We are targeting a radiation hardness at 50 k rad. All the parts are in plastic packaging. The manufacturing flow follows closely the automotive grade qualification plus the radiation test. We're also going to relax some of the stringent logistic constraints typical of rad art in terms of single lot date code for shipment. We have reached the end of the presentation. We will now open the Q&A session where we'll answer some of the questions that came in the chat during the webinar. Try to select those that are most suitable to the general interest. If we do not answer your question live, we will try and reach out in the next few days.